Hi, everyone, and welcome to Round the Table with Cullen Art Group. This is our very special holiday culinary edition. We're so thrilled to have all of you here. Before we begin, we'd like to wish you a happy and healthy, most important, healthy holiday season. We appreciate all of your time and effort during this challenging time. This is our second installment of Round the Table with Cullen Art Group. And this time, you know, it is holiday time. It's a different type of holiday for all of us. We're all experiencing this quote unquote, new normal. We're all looking forward to 2021, right? We're charging ahead to the new year with positivity, right? We're focused like a laser on growth and development, both personally and professionally. So we're so happy that you're with us today. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce Peter Klein, our Director of Culinary Development, who will introduce this virtual round table to all of you. Peter Klein, take it away. Hi, Matt, and thank you, and uh, great to be here. And we have a great uh, group of chefs with us today. So I'm gonna introduce first, uh, Mache Barr. She's the executive chef at T. Rowe Price, which is in Maryland. And uh, we're so glad to have you today. It's a business and industry account too, by the way. So we, we have a great mixture of different chefs from different types of accounts. Uh, Next is uh, Jennifer Minicciello. Uh, she's the executive chef at Brentwood School. It's a K through 12 in Los Angeles County. Beautiful, warm place right now. And last but not least is Chris Tonti. He's the executive chef at Robin's Wolf Events, which is a part of our leisure and catering division. And that's right here in uh, New York City, in Long Island City to be exact. So. Welcome, everybody. We're excited to have you. That's great, Peter. And we have people from all across the country. It's interesting. Peter is calling from Manhattan, New York, right? You're on the great state of New York. I'm out at Stony Brook University out on the eastern end of Long Island in New York. Chris Tanti is in Queens, New York. Mache Barr is over at T. Rowe Price in Maryland. And then we skip across the country to California and we have Jennifer joining us. What's interesting, Peter, is that we have representation from every business line that that we serve business and industry K through 12 events and entertainment with Robin's Wolf event tours, and then you as the director of culinary development. So everyone, we thank you so much for being with us today. And we hope the information that we're giving you will help you get through a different quote unquote holiday season, right? So let's start off with our first question for discussion. You know, food, family, and friends, but specifically food, has really helped us get through this pandemic, right? And when we think of Cullen Art and Compass Group, we think of two things immediately. We think of our wonderful team members and our people, and we think of fabulous food and service, right? They're kind of married together, if you will. So how has this food, family, and friends, how has this helped you? get through the pandemic, both personally and from a company standpoint. And we're gonna start with you, Mr. Klein. Maybe you can take a jab at that for our listeners. Okay, um, sure. Yeah, of course, you know, cooking is something that we do. And um, during this time, you know, to be focused a little bit more on, I think for me, uh, tried to cook more healthy foods because, you know, we're home a lot more, we're, li we're less active. So we want to keep ourselves, you know, healthy and somewhat, you know, not gain the COVID 25 or whatever it is, um, you know, to cook for others is always, you know, as a, as a chef and a cook, you know, that's part of what, you know, brings us joy. And, you know, like I said, especially during these times, you know, I'll cook for neighbors, friends, of course, you know, send things to my family. Um, I've, you know, gone up to see my parents, you know, they're older and, you know, I go and visit them every once in a while. I get tested regularly um, and make sure that, you know, everything's safe. And to that point, um, you know, I've created like new dishes and stuff. And, you know, I'm bringing that now to Cullen Art Group um, when we start doing our promotions in 2021. And uh, 
So that's, you know, that's a benefit too there. Wow, wonderful, Peter. Thank you so much. We're going to go all the way to Maryland and talk to the fabulous Mache Barr. Hi, Mache. How are you? Hey, how are you doing, Matt? Great, great. So, Mache, same kind of idea. You know, food, family, and friends really helped us through this pandemic. But specifically, speaking about culinary, you know, the thread that kind of ties all of us together, if you will. How has that helped you through this pandemic? And what have you brought to the company? So um, from where we are here in Owens Mills, Maryland, um, T-Row is ever evolving. Um, our clients started out with, we want to do a limited service to our clients saying, we're going to feed everyone gratis to our client, um, giving us uh, two other locations to feed to. So we've been constantly um uh, ever evolving to what the community needs are and still trying to provide healthy options for them. So we're still doing, utilizing the quick pick program and doing mosaic fruits, um, still trying to listen to what they love because they still love cheesesteaks, they still love quesadillas, but we have our vegans and our vegetarians and some people are gluten-free. So we try to keep our menu very diverse so that way it doesn't feel like they're getting a brown bag, but they're getting a treat. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you. And you brought up a great point, and so did Peter. Let's thank our clients and our partners, right? We serve inside of buildings or, um, you know, educational institutions or for private events and parties, but we would be nowhere without our wonderful clients, and we call them partners. They really are partners. And T. Rowe Price is a perfect example. So wonderful that you brought that up, Mache. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere because we're coming right back to you. But let's go to Queens, New York, and talk to Chef Chris Tanti. Chris, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, Matt? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for joining us in the midst of always craziness, right? All of you are taking time out of your very busy days as business begins to reactivate and things begin to move forward. You're all running around, right? Operations is the lifeblood of our company. So we thank all of you for joining us round the table. So Chris, how has, you know, food, family, friends, specifically culinary helped you get through this pandemic and then how has that got to the company as well, my friend? Uh, as far as the food service here, we've done a lot of stuff for schools reopening. Um, we've geared more towards cafeterias closing and we've been able to do all permits to provide quick picks and all that from our commissary instead of their central uh, kitchens. And you know, we did take on MSK Hospital. We've been doing a lot of family meals there, really focusing on the staff, making sure everyone's taken care of in that kind of sense. Well, you're kind of unique also because Chris is in charge of our Robin's Wolf event tours, you know, event and catering division, right? You, you, you support that area, but you're also housed in our commissary kitchen and you're shipping food out to our schools that are open in New York City and some other locations. We're also going to touch on, talk about frontline people, emergency services, but hold on to that for a moment because we're going to talk about that as well. So thank you, Chris. Wonderful, wonderful. We're now going to go across the country, ladies and gentlemen, to beautiful Los Angeles County, California. And here we have Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Hi, Matt. How are you today? Great, great. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's three hours earlier in California. So we appreciate it. It's nice and bright and early over there. But how has food specifically helped you and your family personally through this pandemic? And how do we relate that to our team at Cullen Art Group? I think for us, um, we haven't actually shut down one day since the pandemic uh, started. And so uh, for me, I actually live alone. So I, my family's elsewhere, which is great. Um, I don't have to worry about them. But um, for us, it was to look at what we could do for our community. And our partner with Brentwood School, partnership with them, their partnership with the West LA VA um, came into play. And we were able to do food for the homeless. Veterans wow. They actually brought onto campus. 
So they've created a whole camp where we are feeding um, up to 150 meals a day, um, these veterans that are homeless. We also reached out to the community and we have Meals on Wheels. So we've been able to facilitate with the West LA Meals on Wheels and feed, we feed about 150 of their seniors um, lunch every day also. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, so we've been very fortunate to be able to get get the food that they need out in the community um, and be able to fill that void that is needed right now for them. So. Wow, that's great, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you very much. And you bring You're up welcome. a great, great point and a natural segue, right? We want to spend a moment talking about, especially during this holiday time, we remember all those who weren't as fortunate as all of us, whether it's a company standpoint or a health standpoint, right? So our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers go to all those people across the country who have not been as fortunate, even as we focus on a positivity for the future, right? But we have frontline team members that have, have gone above and beyond, specifically from a culinary standpoint. Jennifer, you just gave a great example of that. I'm interested with the group if there are any other stories about our terrific team members who have gone above and beyond. Mache Barr, how about with your team? Any real examples of those heroes that have really risen to the occasion when it comes to coping through this pandemic? To be honest, um, this might sound kitschy, but to be honest, the entire team here has been very motivational. Um, whether we sit down and have family meal and just discuss normal day to day, the fact that we eat, we've eaten lunch together every single day since this started. Um, the, um, most recently, I'm a part of an organization here in Baltimore, um, and we partnered with another organization that feeds the, uh, the community. And I was able to rally the team here at T. Rowe Price to cook food for this unit. And that helped contribute to 1,500 meals being served for Thanksgiving. That is a really big thing for my team to get behind me. And I had a team of like five people to get all that food prepared, packaged up to be sent out um, to take care of a community. And it didn't cost, they weren't paid extra for it. They said, you know what, chef, we have it. No problem, we'll take care of it. That right there is inspirational. The fact that our teams will stand up next to us to help us create opportunities where we can impact other people. And that's one thing that I'm very proud of to see that we are all doing that. Absolutely. And that reminds us of how we all navigated this, you know, virus through the company, at home, the country. And there are all these stories, all these stories of heroes, right, uh, that have risen to the occasion. Before we move on to Peter and Chris, a quick commercial on January 20th for everyone that's listening today, Culinary Art Group will have its first hospitality hero virtual awards program it will be hosted on zoom and we're honoring team members just like jennifer and mache just mentioned that have really shown courage consistency kindness care right delivered action for our customers our partners our clients our guests what have you so that's january 20th it's at 4 p.m eastern time and all of culinart uh, and Compass Group will get information on that virtual awards program, and we'll see across the country uh, team members recognized for their extraordinary accomplishments, right? So that's my little commercial. Let's jump over to Chris Tanti. Chris, we talked about emergency services. We talked about, you know, producing food in the midst of this pandemic and really our fabulous team from a culinary perspective specifically during this holiday time that are rising to the occasion every day as we speak actually so chris maybe you can share some of those stories with our group as well yeah something i've been very pleased with is uh, a lot of my veteran guys we have accounts that have outbreaks this and that it tends to happen it doesn't even come from our company per se and we get calls 10 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night. Hey, we need to feed 600 people in the morning. And we have a lot of our guys, they'll reach out to everyone, bring them all together, and come overnight and just make all this food happen. 
and everyone's coming together to get it done, push it out, and just everyone feels happy doing it and glad to be here. And so, wow, that's and wonderful. And you're doing it every day. You're producing food every day, right? Yeah, every day we've been open. Maybe yeah, open. as we speak. It's probably being as produced behind that wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Chris. We appreciate that. Uh, Peter, I think we want to move on, if we can, Mr. Klein, to uh, the, the people's approach on menu writing, ordering, cooking, you know, and how that's kind of evolved during this COVID-19 pandemic probably important to talk about that so peter let's start with you you know how is the company's overall approach to writing menus ordering cooking etc evolved and changed in light of this pandemic and what are we looking to towards the future so mr klein i pass it back to you sir yeah thanks matt yeah it's um it's, it's interesting that you say that because um we've always tried to you know be less wasteful, you know, trying to um, cross utilize products across our menus as we menu certain items. Um, and now more than ever, it's just really highlighted so much more. Um, and some of it stems from even, you know, some products are not even available now that, you know, there's shortages of items. So, you know, we have to go back to our vendors and make sure, you know, certain products are available for us. But I think, you know, there's been, we're still trying to, you know, offer to Mache's point, you know, diversity, you know, keeping the food interesting for our guests. However, um, you know, we really want to streamline things a bit more. So that's been, you know, pretty much a, of a focus now and really trying to cut back on waste. And I think um, to that point, we are because the meals, the way we're preparing meals now and serving them it's it's just um you know everything's kind of pre-packaged ahead of time so you really need to forecast and really understand you know what's going to sell and you know a little bit of batch cooking of course you know not just preparing so much food at one time so i've really seen it across the board and i've worked with a lot of chefs you know during these times to just um hone in on that and really make the menus like I said, you know, still interesting, but not so, you know, full of so many ingredients, you know, we're bringing less product in, you know, some of our accounts were feeding less people too. So, we, you know, we have to keep all of that in mind. And I think as, you know, as we slowly move forward um, and, you know, I've been doing the promotions for the new year, we've, um, because our grills and our delis are really, you know, where we are, um, focusing on and a little bit of chef's table as well. So, you know, we're starting out the new year with like grill and deli, really focusing on those two areas and quick picks too, which um, Chris produces at the commissary and he's always looking for new, you know, <clears throat> new product, you know, new ideas and new menu items. So, you know, Chris, we have, we're, we're doing a whole year of new um, quick picks. Um, coming up and yeah we, we're already through till March right now so you know that's one thing you know my job we, I have to live in the future right so it's like I'm already in April now you know right right you're, you're planning well into the year and you know yeah. you bring up a great point Peter one of the fabulous things about being part of the Compass Group family of companies is that at Compass Group and Cullen Art right uh, we have cutting edge technology, right, on really not only navigating this new normal, but what are we doing as the business climate changes? You know, what are our customers and our guests looking for specifically? So that cutting edge technology is great to harness, especially around this holiday time. So let's jump back out to Los Angeles County and Jennifer out in Los Angeles. And Jennifer, you were mentioning that you're doing you know, service the whole time. Your your school never closed. What Compass Group, Cullen Art, cutting edge technology is helping you and what are you implementing for the new year moving forward? And I, I bring this to our entire virtual table because we're all going to take bits and pieces of this question because I think it's so important for our operators to hear in real time some of the fabulous programs that are there to support, right? We talk about business support, and this is why we're here. So, Jennifer, we jump back out to you, my friend. 
Thank you. Um, I would say one of the things that we created was an online ordering system, which has helped us quite a bit for when the kids do have to come back to school. Um, and that has helped us along with creating, um, you know, menus that will, uh, our menus are both for Meals on Wheels right now and veterans and our staff and faculty. So it's kind of a mixture, which has kind of been fun. We still stick to a lot of our quick picks, a lot of our entree salads, um, but we did create a whole online system uh, for them to order, which has helped us a lot with waste and uh, sustainability on our end because we do we are packaging it all, like you're saying. It's right, you're doing things differently. Great, yeah. perfect example. Let's pop over to Maryland and talk to Mache. Mache, how about you? What technology are you using in that business and industry account? And what are you looking towards the future as well? So we're right now, we're utilizing the NutriSlice app to, um, for contactless ordering. So the guests will go ahead and place their order. They'll have a time to come down, they'll pick up. Um, and not have to worry about going to the cash register, pull money out, is a street clean, come in, pick up and, and move uh, on to your next thing, whether they wanna have it their de eat at their desk or they wanna eat in the cafe, socially distanced. Also, we've introduced um, a meal kit. So say we have um, a T-Row team member here or even um, that would like to have, they're gonna be working late and they may want a uh, quick dinner. So like we have turkey, turkey dinner ready to go, um, pasta meal for the kids, vegetarian lasagna, roasted turkey. And these kits um, are a, a really good price and they feed two to three people. Um, we have those available. And right now we're working on, and we have live is our Christmas meal kits. So moving forward, we're trying to still interact with the community and providing the services we were doing before. But at the same time, still be able to cater to them like we've done in the past. Um, one highlight for this week is we are shipping out 35 boxes to the CFO technology group here for T-Row Price. It's gonna be like a surprise Christmas gift that's gonna to come to them in the mail. Um, and again, that speaks to that flexibility um, here at the here at T-Row Price and then um, we've fed cost groups, so we just try to stay interactive and still keep the catering going and still have the regular service. Um, right now, we're still going through the NutriSlice app for that. We were using CaterTrack for everything, but we found that the NutriSlice app was more flexible for us than right, right now. Great, great. And again, all of that brought to us by our fabulous marketing and brand strategy department, right? All of those NutriSlice and applications that, again, help our business move forward in a changing climate, right? So we're able to pivot, if you will, to really uh, go after what our guest, our customer, our client really wants in real time. So wonderful, Mache. Chris, I'm going to come back to New York over to you in our wonderful commissary location at Robbins Wolf Event Tours. Chris, what, what is some cutting edge technology that you're experiencing right now? And what are you looking to towards the future, my friend? Most of the technologies we've implemented uh, in the last few months have actually been with uh, safety and sanitation, mostly to do with, uh, you know, contact with sanitizers, soaps, towel dispensers, having the marketing team come up with more signs for the buildings, uh, lots of information with the, um, sorry, social distancing. Oh, you know, sure, sure. You know just directing traffic, that kind of situation. Well, you bring up a great point, Chris, because you talk yeah. about safety and everything we're doing right now. Well, in, in our business, right, we've been all in the hospitality business. And if I went around the room and I counted how many years, we'd have many, many years in this business, right? All of us. But we're always used to operating through the eyes of safety, right? We always do that in our business. However, now it's safety at a whole different level with COVID-19 coming into practice. So everything that we're doing is wrapped in that concept that all important concept of safety and sanitation, especially in culinary service. So thank you so much, Chris. I'm so glad you brought up that safety component. We appreciate that. Peter, what are some new and um, innovative programs that you'd like to mention that we're looking at as we continue 
in 2020, and we look to 2021 from a culinary and safety perspective. The one great tool that we do use is uh, Webtrition. It's our recipe database. Um, and so all the recipes for the past, what, four years, I guess, you know, we're constantly building our recipe database there. And what's great out in the field, again, you can, you know, you can um, do your ordering through this. So you can see how much food you need to order. You can plug in the exact amount of, um, you know, meals you want to do and it, it's a great tool for that too because it tells you exactly how much to prepare exactly how much to order um and I, I think that's just a great resource and we've been you know pushing that out into the field at culinary group you know for the past two years and now more than ever because uh to mache's point where they use uh nutrislice that works together with uh webtrition they so you can get all that nutritional information. It's, it's all available on an app. You can see, you know, if you have any allergens or any of those kinds of things, it's all listed on there. Wow, so that's, that's wonderful. A, yeah, so that's a great tool and resource. Um, and then a new one is Edify. It's another ordering app that we just um, implemented recently. And I've been building that database, again, of all the, you know, recipes. So it's, it's so important that we, follow um, recipes that we already have. And like I said, that's something that, you know, um, we're constantly building. Well, that's great. Thank you, Peter. And I want to bring us all back to the holiday season, right? A different holiday season as we prepare. We're right on the heels of, of Christmas and everything that goes along with New Year, et cetera, right? And we wish a happy and healthy holiday season to all of our team members at Cullen Art and Compass Group. But let's talk about some holiday favorites, right? Let's end up with some holiday season favorites. So, Peter, we'll start with you. What are some of your holiday favorites? Do you base them on family? Do you base them on culture? You know, what are some things that you're doing this holiday season in the face of a kind of a different landscape for all of us? So, Mr. Klein, we go to you first, sir. Okay. Um, well, I have like a, a dessert that I do. It's called the, the Grinch Bark. It's basically um, matcha. I use matcha tea. In with white chocolate and dark chocolate and you just create um, a bark with a uh, crushed peppermint candy cane and black sesame seed on it and I cut it up and I you know I put it in little packages and I usually give it away to you know family friends everyone um, so that that's kind of a special one that I like to do. Mache how about you out in uh, Maryland what is a family favorite and where does it come from and what are you planning on this holiday season? So family favorite for me is a, just a traditional sweet potato pie, just a traditional sweet potato pie. But this holiday season, my husband's from uh, Florence, South Carolina. He hasn't been able to make it back home. So I was just thinking to give him a traditional South Carolina Thanksgiving that he is used to. So we're gonna have some fried turkey. We wanna have some uh, mustard barbecue uh, turkey. We're gonna have some ham. Um, my mother-in-law brought back some raccoons when she was down there. So we're going to put some raccoons. Oh my gosh, I'm going to we'll leave that uh, alone. No raccoon jokes, no nothing. I'll just, I'll just say it sounds yummy, Mache. So it's just very, um, just his, like what he's used to when he's back at home and then we're just going to do a Zoom session. But he really likes raccoon. It's <laughs> Yeah, we did not rehearse the raccoon uh, dish. That is a first for us around the table. And you know what? You can keep that private. You don't have to share with all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Mache. We appreciate that. Great, great, great. Let's jump over to Jennifer out in California. Jennifer, what's a holiday favorite that you'll be preparing um, on this different holiday of 2020? Um, well, we would probably normally be doing a prime rib with my family, um, but for our veterans and for our Meals on Wheels, we're going to be doing a short rib braised, and then um, I'm going to be we're going to be making risotto. So I'm Italian, obviously, <laughs> um, and so we kind of bring some of that Italian heritage into them and make sure they have a nice, delicious um, meal at the holiday time. So. 
<laughs> wow, that's very nice. Thank you very much. And Thank Mr. You. Tanti, oh, you're welcome. Well, how about you? Anything you'll be doing special or have some special culinary meaning to you for this new holiday we're experiencing? Uh, like every holiday, Robins will make a lot of hand-painted uh, sugar cookies and butter cookies and gingerbread cookies. It's something our clients ask for every year. We usually send the guys home with a few bags, all the cooks and some of the front of house staff. We do really intricate, uh, you know, Christmas trees and stockings and all that. Some people even use them as ornaments. Uh, and they're very nice. We usually bag them up and give them to the neighbors, that kind of thing. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, listen, I want to thank our entire panel once again, Peter Klein, Mache Barr, Chris Tanti, and the lovely and talented Jennifer Minicciello from California. From our family at Cullen Art Group and Compass Group to all of you, we, we wish you a healthy and happy holiday season. This has been Round the Table with Cullen Art Group. Stay tuned for our next episode in January. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Have a great holiday, and thank you for joining us today.